Hello, today we're going to be installing Microsoft SQL Server, the free version, and importing the AdventureWorks sample database. So those are these tables over here. So this is really useful for learning how to do SQL queries, write views, and creating a portfolio of your data visualization. And then I'm also going to show you how to connect to this with Power BI. So let's get started. What we're gonna do is download SQL Server first. So if I search for SQL Server download, our first two results are the ones that we want. So both SQL Server, so this one here, and also SQL Server Management Studio. So I'm gonna open both of those. The difference between these is the SQL Server is going to be the thing that holds the data that we can query. And then SQL Server Management Studio is gonna be the tool that we use to query that data, okay? And for SQL Server, you get brought to this page, just scroll past this block at the top and go down to choosing which version you want. So Developer or Express, both of these are free and both of them will work for what we're trying to do. And the difference is that Express only lets you have up to 10 gigabytes of size for a database. AdventureWorks is much smaller than that, so it'll work fine. Developer is the full version, but you're only supposed to use it for development purposes, which if you're doing stuff with sample data, that's development purposes. So you could use that too. Express you can technically use for production if you want to. So I'm just gonna get Express and that's gonna download. Take a note of what year version you download when you do this, because that's gonna be important later. So mine is SQL 2022. If you're watching this years down the road, it might be a later version and the UI might look a little bit different, but the premise is the same. And I just downloaded it twice, whoops. Wow, this whole thing is a button here, that's cool. And then the second one we want is SSMS. So that one, there's a link to download at the top of the article, and then you click this one here to download SSMS. We're gonna install both of those. Here's what it looks like. Install SQL Server first. That's this one here. I'm not going to go all the way through the installation process because y'all know how to click the next button a few times and then finish, right? And we're just going to do a basic installation. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to install over the top of it. So after you're done with installing SQL Server, install SSMS. That's this one here. And then same thing. You can go ahead and do that. And when you're done with those two, we need to download our sample data. So I am going to use AdventureWorks data for this. You can use other data if you want to. You can use CSVs. It's a slightly different technique for CSVs, but I'll show you where that is too. So for this, they give you the entire database. So that's a backup file.bak. And you want to choose the same year as the version of SQL Server that you have. So since I installed SQL Server 2022, I want this version here. They tell you right up top, if you're not sure which version you want, start with the OLTP version that matches your SQL Server version. So we're just going to do that. So this one here, and then we're going to import it in our SQL Server. So the next step is to open SSMS. So if you just search in your start menu for SSMS, SSMS, it'll pop up. So SQL Server Management Studio, open. So my connection info auto-populated. The server name is going to be your computer name since you installed it on your computer. Your computer is now a server. If for whatever reason it didn't auto-populate for you, you can get your computer name from searching in the start menu for my computer and it'll pop up with a view your PC name. You can click on that to see it. Authentication, you want Windows authentication and connect. So next we're going to import our database. We're going to right click on the folder called databases under our SQL server and then go to restore database. And then for the source, instead of restoring from a database, we're going to restore from our device. So in order to import this database, we're basically just doing a restore of a backup and the backup is what we downloaded. And we need to click on this ellipses menu here to navigate to the backup file. So in this window, we want to choose add. The backup media type is file and it'll default you to the backups folder for Microsoft SQL Server in this UI. And the thing is, is you can't actually navigate to your downloads folder in here. I tried to do that and it actually doesn't let you expand to the downloads folder. So what you wanna do is just copy this path up here. So just highlight it and do control C on your keyboard and then navigate to that with the Windows File Explorer. So we're gonna just paste this path in here and hit enter to go to it. So this is where we're gonna to wanna to put the backup file because it's an easy place that SQL Server likes to get it from. So I'm gonna open another file explorer with the right click menu on the folder here, file explorer, and then go back to our downloads folder. And I'm just gonna drag and drop that AdventureWorks database from our downloads folder to this backup folder. So it's in there. Now we go back to SQL Server 
And where'd my window go? Here it is. Okay, so there's a little refresh icon next to the path up here. So click that if you don't see your backup file and then select it. So mine is this one here and then click OK and then click OK again and click OK again. All right, so it imported successfully. So now we can see it here. And if we expand this out, we can see our views and our tables. And if you're super unfamiliar with SSMS, if you want to query something in here, all you do is click on new query and you can do something like select star from sales customer and it'll auto populate stuff as you type and then to run your query you click execute so you can practice sql with this you can create views in here oh and one more thing if you are trying to import a csv file so just a single table what you want to do for that is make sure you have a database that you want to put it in first if you don't already have one you can just right click on databases and say new database can click OK here. And on this database that I just created, if I right click it and then go to tasks and then import flat file, that's going to be the easiest way to import a CSV. There's like six different menu options for importing data. And this is the one that worked for me. So if you do run into an error with this wizard method, it's usually because your nvarchar or your text columns aren't set to allow a long enough number of characters. That was the one thing I did run into. So you can just increase the number of characters to above whatever the max will be for your data set and it should just work out better. So I'll go through this real quick. So I'm just going to browse. Let's go with popular baby names. So it'll give you a preview. Just keep going to next. If any of your columns are a primary key, you can check the box next to them. This data set doesn't have a primary key. If you wanna allow nulls, check the box next to that. And then finish and close. So now I should have a table under tables here. That is our baby names. And if you're new to SSMS, you can also just right click a table and then do select top however many rows versus having to type in a query just to see what's in the table. If you want to connect to the SQL Server with Power BI Desktop, I'll show you how to do that real quick. All right, so in Power BI, you can either do a blank report or you can choose SQL Server here. If you do a blank report, your connection type that you want in this Get Data menu is going to be SQL Server. If you're looking at this menu, it's called SQL Server Database in this menu. So any of those will work. And then for your server, what you want to put in here is local localhost. Localhost means my computer. You can leave database blank and it'll just connect to the top level and let you choose your tables and databases. So now if I expand AdventureWorks, this is the one we want, I can choose as many tables as I want here. And the kind of cool thing about this is that because of the way this database is structured, it's very good at auto discovering the relationships between the tables, not like normally the relationship auto discovery is a little bit iffy. So the last time I went and did this, I imported like 15 tables and it actually got all the relationships right. I was really surprised. So that's cool. So once you choose what you want, you can either load or transform. So I use this database for almost all of my demos and stuff. So I like it a lot. It's a pretty good representation of like real business data. It's a little bit cleaner than you'd normally see, obviously, but it's got all of the different dimensions in it that you can use to build something cool. And if you're not familiar with how the on-premise versus cloud sources work in Power BI, if you connect to a local server and then publish your report to the cloud, it's going to need a gateway to refresh. Not that this data has any new data being added, so you don't really need to refresh it, but this is a good opportunity to play around with how the gateway is set up too, right? So you can actually connect it to your local SQL server if you want to practice setting up the gateway. So that's everything I have for you today. Thank you for watching and have a great day.